everyone, I'm Kevin Logan. And I'm Jason. And we are Father. And Son. And Jason, what are we chatting about today, sir? We're chatting about last season four. We're already past the fourth season. We've just got two more to go. So we are well past the halfway point, of course. We are uh, now into the season that was cut short a little bit by the writer strike. Uh, so there are two episodes left, uh, less this season than there were supposed to, to be. There were supposed to be 16, uh, but there's only 14. And then season five will have the 16 that this was supposed to have. And then six goes all the way to 19 for some reason, which is a really kind of strange number. Uh, but we are also kind of sadly, although there's still some fun surprises to be had, uh, past the point that I was really excited to see your reaction for. We talked about last time when we did season three, where I was really stoked to see uh, how you would feel about the flash forwards and the fact that we were gonna go into the future and the fact that we were gonna get our characters off island and also into this season, uh, the fact that we were going to get into time travel stuff. So we'll talk about all of those things and more. Uh, Jason, overall, uh, how do you feel season four stacks up to the other three? And were you satisfied with how we handled the flash forwards? So, um, I, I really like that we get to see, like, what happens after they leave the island. Like, I knew that that was going to happen at some point, but I didn't know, like, if we were going to keep going with it after they left the island. Yeah. Or if that was, or if the big finale was going to be they leave the island and they were going to do a whole bunch of other crazy stuff. <laughs> so did you mean you didn't really expect us to keep going forward? I mean, to keep, yeah. to, to keep going uh, back to the fast forward, to the, to the flash forwards on, on the, uh, you know, off island? Because, I mean, when we did the last video, you'd already seen the next couple, so you knew that we were doing some of that. Yeah. Because you saw that Jack episode right into the, into the beginning of the season. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I like season three more because of the ending. And I feel like... Just because it had a really exciting finish. Yeah, and I also like the whole thing with the Dharma Station and uh, season two. And season one is probably like... I feel like season one is better than season three and four. I, I feel like like two then one then three then four, basically. Okay, so that's where you're at at the moment. At the so, moment. So four is your least favorite at the, at the right now. Uh yeah, it, I mean. Even though when, when, you and I, when you and I talked about this off camera, uh, you didn't seem to have a lot of negative stuff to say about four. So you're just talking I mean, about preference I, of what's fun to watch. Yeah, I mean like what's better than because. I don't really have a least favorite season, just, um... Yeah, just if you had to rank them. Yeah, if I had to rank them, the least on that list right now of the first four would be four. So, but. so let me ask you this, does that mean that the payoff doesn't really live up to the setup for you? Because you said three, you, part of the reason you, you, and I have this too, part of the reason you, you enjoyed it so much is because it had such a cool cliffhanger. Yeah. And then... So, so do you feel and like the, scene keeps so do you feel going. Like, yes, it does. And, th and through the season, too. Because we come back to it uh, in the in the Big Three Barter at the end. Where it's like, we have to go back. And then she stops the car and turns around. Yeah, I love that. And that's hilarious. We did that a couple times in the series. And that's a thing. Obviously, you can't watch the show right now. But that's a thing Breaking Bad will do. Where, the, where, where like, uh, there'll be a big cliffhanger scene. And then you'll get into... The, the, the next episode uh, of the first season, or the, of the next season, or even some other episode later, and that scene will keep going. Um, so, let me ask you about structure a little bit. Um, so this season is, is kind of weird, because it almost feels like two different seasons put into one. Like, we end up kind of catching up to ourselves at the end, so you've got... So we know we get off island, and then... Uh, through the flash forwards, we span like three years. Yeah. And at the end of the season, we kind of catch up to that. So when we get into five, we're still doing some flashbacks that go back to some of those three years, but we're moving forward from them. So what's so what's interesting is it kind of watches like you've got, like I said, kind of kind of two seasons at the same time. We're we're like the the main A story has to catch up to 
what has taken the place primarily of the flashbacks, which is the flash for which is the, the the flash forwards. So what's really interesting is there's obviously a lot less screen time utilized for that, but that's actually the stuff that's carrying us forward to what we're going to deal with, you know, mostly getting into five. So isn't that kind of a weird feeling? Yeah. Well, like the A story is technically now the flashbacks, but they're not played as the flashbacks. They're they're the A story. They're the the bulk of the narrative. Yeah. Um, and usually every uh, episode starts with just the island, and like so, the island is basically the A story, but it kind of is the flashbacks. Yeah, and I mean to be fair, that is still I. Uh, that is still moving forward from what we did in the first three seasons, so, like, that is present day. But because we jumped ahead and we have to catch up to it, that stuff feels like it's in the past now because I guess it just depends on how you look at it. Like, does it feel like the flash-forwards are in the future, or does it feel like the present day is in the past now? It's a little bit loopy. And I and I think when you get to the end of the season, it very much feels like the present day stuff is in the past, especially because what I'm interested most in is the future stuff, and I get kind of bored on the island some. Like, for me, and this is what I want to ask you about, uh, structure-wise, like, there's there's obviously some really good, important stuff that happens there, especially with uh, Locke and Ben, but um, the... For me, some of the island stuff, or I should say more specifically, some of the just slightly off-island stuff, the freighter stuff, for me is like the cages in season three, where it just goes on and on and I don't care that much. Uh, like, once I know why the freighter is there, because that's kind of the big mystery at the beginning, is are they here to get our people off the island, or are they here for some kind of other ulterior motive? And Locke thinks that they're... Uh, that, that like everybody's in danger and that they're gonna you know you know kill everybody on the island and Jack thinks that they're gonna get them off the island and the answer is somewhere in the middle. Um, the they kind of are supposed to do both. Yeah, well, I mean, they're not there at all to get them off the island, but that does end up happening. Uh, you know, you know, at least at least the six. Uh, so when I say the answer somewhere in the middle, I just mean both things actually. Only Jack's thing ends up happening, and they manage to stop the thing that Locke thinks is going to happen from happening, but that is supposed to happen. Like, Woodmore yeah. is, is planning on detonating, you know, something on the island. Um, so anyway, uh, did, you, did you have what I did where some of the stuff on the island felt really meandering and slow? Or, yeah. or, did, or, did you, or did you enjoy all that like you did the cage stuff? Uh, <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. So... I kind of, like, I, I feel like the cage stuff is more boring, even though I like the cage stuff, which no one else does. Yeah. But, um, I feel like the... Is that just because yeah. you like Sawyer that much? Oh, uh, probably. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but basically, um, I like the island stuff because, uh, like, I like it, but it, yeah, it kind of is boring a little bit. Um, because we don't do much on the island. Like, we do stuff, but we do more on the freighter and stuff. And that stuff is more exciting than... Oh, okay, because that's the stuff I'm complaining about is the freighter stuff. I, I, like, like, I feel like, like, I'm, I'm interested enough in, uh, the, the Locke and Ben stuff and the tete-a-tete -tete there and Locke eventually, uh, you know, being set up to take over for the, the others where they're going to follow him and the mystery with Richard and with Jacob and, uh, you know, all, all that stuff See, is... Yeah, I, I feel like that stuff is kind of boring. You think that stuff's kind of boring? That's fair. Um... Well, and it doesn't feel like we get anywhere with it until the end, so there's... I don't mean to jump around too much. I feel like this season uh, is, it like establishes more new questions than it answers things. Like, I feel like season three gives us quite a few revelations, and it does, a, it, it does set up some new mysteries, primarily Jacob. This season is more... Uh, throwing a bunch of new, weird, random stuff at us. And I actually have... Um, some questions. Oh, sure. I'm sure you did. I'm sure um, some of it's stuff I can't answer. I have, like, three questions that I'm just like, what? We'll talk about it. I'm sure some of it's stuff that I can't answer either because I, I don't want to give anything away or because the show never gives us the answer. Because, <laughs> of course, so, some of that will happen, and you're going to start seeing more of that as we go along, I think. But, but you have weird stuff like... Why is Richard showing up to Locke at various points in his life? 
and who's uh, who's the black guy that was there uh, uh, right after? And, I, and I'm trying to remember if he was like uh, supposedly working for Oceanic or, or, or what. I can't remember now. But like he shows up to a couple of different people um, in flashbacks, and one of them is locked right after he gets his legs messed up. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um. Well, and in the flash forwards. Um, yeah, he's there. He's, he's there too. Is he the tall guy that talks to? Like Kate and Sawyer, I think. I, th or something? I think he talks to them too. Yeah. And 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 Hurley. The tall bald bald guy. The yeah, bald, bald yeah, because he's because he's at the uh, place where Hurley goes, and I think he's yes. actually in a flashback. Wait, isn't he in that one flashback where like Sawyer's at the place? Where he's like arrested or something? I don't remember. Someone's it, arrested. At this point. And. The tall guy goes there. And yeah. He's so like now, up at so now the, he's a big mystery. Where he, yeah. he's, he's he's this player that seems to be like going around manipulating things. I was like, who the heck? And then and then you have the question of how are there ghosts off island? Hmm. With Charlie. Oh yeah, yeah. And I don't think he's the only one. I can't remember if it's this season or later. I don't want to give too much away, but we'll, but we'll see dead Christian on and off island. Mm. And so, like, that's a big question. But but anyway, so the one big answer this season does give us is why it's so hard to find the island. It does finally yeah. give us that, where we find out that you can move it, <laughs> that it moves I, around. I feel like that's... An answer and a question? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you just have a big question mark the whole season? Where, where you're just like, and and how, and why, and what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, should we get into good things and bad things? Yeah, sure. Let's um, go ahead and do that. So, yeah, I, I, I like the flash forwards. I like how, um, like... They probably can't really come up with a lot of more flashbacks. So, and also, you're spot on the about that. The whole thing about like the flash forwards and all that is pretty cool. Um, and how like they get off the island, and and I did not know that they were going to do that that early in like the end of season three. Yeah, I thought so they just. I thought that was the big finale. So questions about the Oceanic Six. First of all, did you find it compelling the way it's kind of, uh, whether you think this is in a good way or a, or a bad way, teasing us about who the Six are? Where, like, it, it's constantly giving us red herrings and throwing us off and trying to make us guess at who the Six are going to be. Like, did you find it fun to guess at it? Or at some point did you find yourself going, okay, like, just give it to me. I don't care anymore. Um, I felt like it was kind of fun to guess about it, because I was just like, okay, yeah, Jack and Kate, and then, and, and, and Hurley, and then wait, Sawyer, yay, and then, like... And then it's not Sawyer. Uh, not Sawyer, Saeed. Because, because um, I think they're, tr they're trying to make... So there are places where I think, and, th and this irritates me a little bit, there are places where I think it's intentionally being kind of contrived in dialogue, trying to throw you off... Where where we'll we'll either use uh with with the whole Bentham thing we'll either use like a different name and then once we know what it is we can use his real name where it's like okay that was just for the sake of the audience like you decided you weren't gonna tell us that Locke was dead until the end of the season and then once we know he's dead now everybody can say it when before they're like oh no don't don't say his name don't say his name and they're like now it's okay that you can say it just so that they can mess with us through that whole thing. But Sawyer's the same way, where it's like, um, with with, uh, with Kate, you remember where she's on the phone with Jack, and it's like, uh, oh, he's he's gonna wonder where I am. He, okay, turns out that you're actually meaning the kid, but everybody thinks you're talking about Sawyer. Yeah, and I thought, I thought, like, it was like, Jack, Kate, Sawyer, Locke, and, and I was totally wrong. <laughs> um, and then I guess, uh, Sun and Jin, and I was just like, "Yay!" But wait, where's Jin? And and the we'll reveal talk about that, that the reveal that he's dead is a decent reveal. Yeah. Or that he's supposedly dead. We'll we'll, we'll get there. Um. 
Yeah. Well, okay. So, um, you, I, th- I, I don't want to like tell he... you either or, but right now they're playing it as a mystery as to whether or not he's really dead. They, off island, they think he's dead. Yeah. So you think, so you thought that, um, you remembered that that episode where we figure out that he's dead is not a very good one. Um, cause that's, that's the G on one. The G on one. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite episodes just because there's a lot of fun things in it. Yeah. But they tease us a little bit. It's both the best and the worst episode. Of the <laughs> yeah. Season. And I didn't remember the good stuff because the way it screws with us so much in the fla- in the flashback slash flash forwards <laughs> pisses me off, okay? You think that it's a flash forward, but it's a flashback. You it, think that... It makes me really, really angry. But then, and we'll talk about that in a second, but the thing is, the A story, the well, and also the actual flash forwards, like, like all of that is really good. It, it's, it's one of... Uh, the most like like tender and heartfelt Jin Sun episodes. Like they're fantastic together in that. Yeah. Like like the on island stuff. Yeah. Um, it's really good. Like it's the most I I like them as a couple in the entire series. Uh, and that again that reveal when they go to the funeral at the end is really good. When she's with Hurley or not not the funeral but when they're at the grave. Um, like it's some of the best writing that season. Uh, I have to go back and look at writing credits. I'm not sure who worked on that one, but it, but like it's, I uh, like like I say, it's it's really it's really heartfelt. It it's uh it reminds me of a lot of the really good stuff in season one, where it's back to being you know really about the um about the character stuff, but. That 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 flashback flash forward thing is just like breaking the rules for for no reason, just to mess with me. And like when we find out what's actually happening with Jin, it's totally pointless. Why were we seeing that? So the idea is uh, in the flash forwards, um, uh, Sun is in labor. She's she's going to deliver. And remember, the big reason she needed to get off the island is because she conceived on the island. So if she delivers on the island, she's going to die. Because every, presumably, because every woman that conceives on the island dies on the island. If you conceived off island and you got there, you're able to deliver. I don't know that we ever fully understand why that is. I was wondering if it has something to do with the electromagnetism and, and the whole uh, like time space thing somehow. I don't know, but um, that's them's the rules. So I uh, Sun has to get off the island in order to deliver. She does that, and I uh, the whole the whole time in the flash forwards when she is in labor, we think that she's waiting for Jin to get there, but it turns out that uh, Jin is is actually uh, not around and they think he's dead. And so we keep jumping to what we think is just more of the same flash forward, because we've never done this. We've never jumped between a flashback and a flash forward. And we've, we've also never, to my recollection, um, intercut between even two flashbacks like this before. And so uh, when, we, when we cut to Jin, we're seeing him trying to, um, he's on his way to the hospital, and he's trying to get his hands on a gift. And we think that, and so he buys a big panda at a, at a toy store, and then he leaves, and then he ends up losing the panda in a taxi cab, and then he has to go back and get another one. And uh, he is, like, really intense and, 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 and upset about this, and it's, like, um, you know, paramount importance he has to get there with this, with this, uh, with this panda bear, and you're, this huge panda. And you're thinking, like, okay, you, you want to see your kid be born, like, why don't you just forget the gift and just hurry up and get there? And then when he gets there, it turns out that it's just another errand that in the that in the past, he's running for Paik to help seal some deal with a big corporation. And you're like, or I'm like, really? Like, why do we even... That's just redundant. Like, it's only there to mess with me because we know that he does these kinds of things for Paik and that he doesn't want to disappoint Paik and that Paik is dangerous and so like he's 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 got to do th- these these things for that guy but like the only reason you put it there is so that we're thinking that he's alive and so that we can have this this big reveal at the end that he's not and like th- that was not just unsatisfying but like unfair th- like it was stupid the way it played with me and i've always hated it it's made me angry ever since i saw it the first time when it was on i've always hated that but then the rest of the episode was great yeah 
And, um... Sorry, I had to break that down. Why... Why does Sun even call for his name if she knows that he's dead and that everyone in the hospital is like, should we call him? He's dead. Yeah. Like, and also, I, I get how she's, like, she might be just like, um, I, I wish, uh, like, he was here. Yeah. But, like... And I guess those people just don't know that he's alive, or that he, that he's not that he's not around. But but you're right. Like it, feel, way she, it feels totally retroactive. Like, but the way she like asks it, she's just like, "Where is Jin?" And I'm just like, well, "But it's but, like in the moment the actress has only gotten part of the script and she doesn't know that he's not there." <laughs> You know, and I get the feeling they do that this that kind of thing some in that show, so it's entirely possible that that it that, that it was that way. But like, there's there's a difference between writing uh, like subtext and having um and, and and having layers where we'll understand it once we know what's actually really going on, and something like this where it's just you write it as if it's one way, and then. Immediately when there's when we find out what it really is and there's a switch, now you're writing it the other way. Like that's what it feels like, and it's exactly the same thing with the Jeremy Bentham thing, which I hate. Where it's like, I uh, uh, oh oh he's he's dead. He no d don't say his name. Don't say his name. Oh I uh, uh, Bentham Jeremy Bentham. I don't know why they're not supposed to say his to, to say Locke's actual name. I uh, because because Locke was pretending to be a guy named Jeremy Bentham apparently, and then uh, that's that's who's that's who's in the casket. So so it's, so it's locked, but everybody calls him Bentham, and they do that for our benefit, so we won't know who it is. And then as, and then we've already watched the first episode of season five because we keep doing this. So as so as soon as the audience is aware that that's Locke, now they'll just call him Locke. Bentham, you mean Locke? Yeah, I mean Locke. Okay, well, last season, which for you was like ten minutes ago, you were saying no, don't say his name. It's obnoxious. I hate that. But now that everyone else knows that who he is, then that. They're not supposed to know that we're watching it. Exactly, exactly. It's just for the sake of the audience. Yep. So that kind of thing drives me nuts. But what else did you like about GEO? Since, since you're since you're already there and you said that's your favorite episode. Um. So I I just I remember there being um like a lot of fun things and um it's just a pretty good episode um that. Uh, you know, you you figure out that Jin's dead, and then, and at first I was just like, okay, then who are the six? There's only five. Oh wait, the baby. The baby, yeah. Is that the episode where Jin finally learns that she slept around on him, and then he's he's angry with her for a while, and then he gets really reasonable uh, re reasonable about it, and he admits to to his own faults, and then they they like really come together. Is, yeah. is it that episode, or is that um, a different one? Because I forget if that's where that was, but I really liked the way that whole thing was handled. I think that's the one, yeah, because uh, she, uh, Juliet, um, like, tells him that. That's what, yeah. Oh, yeah, doesn't she tell him in Korean? Is there a thing? I mean, I'm forgetting now. There's some things that are running together for me. I'm forgetting if she accidentally says it in English and he understands it, or if for some reason she knows Korean. There's a couple of characters that end up knowing Korean. Anyway, I forget. Yeah. I I forgot who knew Korean. There was, like, someone, like, very recently in the show. I don't think that was this season. I think that was the previous season. Yeah. Um. And I think it was in a flashback. But I know what you're talking about. Yeah. There was like a, there was like an English guy or like an American guy. Yeah, it's not important. Anyway. <laughs> um, Maybe have been at the airport. I, I forget. I don't know. Do you want me to do my other favorite episode? Absolutely. Yeah, might as well. Since um, we're there. And then we can go back to wait, good stuff, bad stuff. actual episode again? I forgot. Because I, I, I knew I put it on there, but I forgot what actual, what the actual episode was. Let me just... Look 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, my other favorite episode is The Constant. Yeah. And it's, I figured it's, you it's, put that on there. It's the Desmond episode. I should have just said that when you were looking it up. I, I figured that's, yeah. Um, so, basically, what happens in this episode is he gets amnesia, and he keeps, like, switching back, like, time traveling, basically, back to, um, in, like, 98. It's like 96, yeah, it's like mid-90s. And he, um, and he has to or go... Or is it 98? It, it's 98. Is it 98? It's okay. 98. Okay. And he has to go to, uh, Faraday. And, cause, uh, Faraday is just, Faraday is like, uh... Cause, you have to cause get Faraday to knows that he's time-traveling yeah. somehow. And by the way, Faraday is, uh, this new character, we should talk about the new characters, um, who's, like, the, the, the science guy on the team, and he has this, uh, understanding about, uh, about, uh, quantum physics and space-time, and he's working at a university in the late 90s, and when Desmond goes back, he's like, uh, find me at the university so that he can give him the information that will stabilize him so that he can exist in each time period separately and have his memories back. Yeah. Um, and there's this other guy that's like, I forgot who he was, but he was this, like, crazy person who happened, who that thing happened to him, too, and he went... And he gives. Oh, I back forgot back about that guy. Into, yeah. Yeah, and that guy's crazy. Um, and this is sort of the second time this has happened to Desmond. Yeah, because he goes back. Yeah. Because last season, it's different. He lives his life, part of his life, over again. And he's able to do things differently, but he ends up in the same place, right? And then uh, he, because of that, somehow also has premonitions of Charlie's death. That's how, that's how we get that whole thing. And so he has always had this uh, kind of weird relationship with quantum physics. And so then uh, here he ends up uh, actually. Um, well, I, I guess I guess it's sort of the same thing because it's not like he's physically time traveling. It's like it's it's like his his uh, his consciousness his is going head is he's going back. But this time it's jumping back and forth. Yeah, and um, he actually has to go back to Oxford. Yeah. Um, in season five, and I I've only seen the first episode, so I don't know what's going on there. But uh, you'll see. It's kind of, it, it and that's when it gets really crazy. Uh, oh, when we get there. really? Yep, that's when one of the silliest images of the entire show is there. Oh, so no. just wait for that. It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's where that is. I can't wait to get there. Uh, the time travel hijinks are going to get crazy. Oh, no. Wait, do they go to the time of dinosaurs or something? No, they don't do anything that nuts. <laughs> They're not like animorphs. All I'll say is, you've seen the first episode of season five now, so you know that the island is jumping around in time. Yeah. We're going to do stuff with that. Oh, okay. I, I, I like jumping back in time with things because you get to see stuff in, like, the really, like, I like Endgame because that because yeah. they go back to, like, earlier movies, and I don't even know how they were able to do that. Yeah, some people really dislike that kind of thing where, where it's, like, it, it's just it's just a gimmick or you're just banking on nostalgia, you're just playing your greatest hits. Uh, it's better, I think, and I, and I get people's qualms with, that, with, with Endgame. Um, I, I like it in places and dislike it in other places. I have a you know complex um, uh, attitude about that whole thing, um, but uh, opinion about that whole thing. But with this, and I mean, we'll get there when we get there, but um, you're not, there, there are a couple places where, and you've already seen some of it, where we'll see something that we already knew about or that, or, or, or be inside of a moment that we've already experienced. But it doesn't feel like it's playing its greatest hits. It feels like it's uh, actually like exploring the mythology and telling us more stuff uh, because we get to actually meet and do stuff with the uh, Dharma scientist guy. Yeah. Who you, who you saw in that first episode. Yeah. Did that blow your mind? Um, that, like, he was going to actually be a character? Um, no. No? You didn't seem that surprised by that. And I, and yeah. I, and I, thought, I thought you'd be really excited about that. When, like, he sits down and he starts making one of those tapes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just like, 
oh cool, he's a new character. I mean, isn't he already a new character though? Isn't like what do you mean? isn't he Miles? Or is M- no? Okay, he's not Miles. I thought he was Miles. How could he be Miles? He's like an older guy. Oh. Like, why did you think he was Miles? I thought you told me he was Miles. Mm-hmm. No, he's not Miles. Again, I don't want to give too much but away. Do, probably. Do, do, you, do, you want, do you want me to tell you anything? Uh, do, do you want to yeah. wait? <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, cause he, like, he and Miles are related. Yeah, that's what I would Mi- think. Miles is his kid. Okay. That, it was... I knew it was something like that because they look almost the same. They did a really good job of casting. Yeah, the guy, the guy who plays Miles, uh, looks like that guy. So you were already thinking they must be related in some way. Yeah. So did you think it was some kind of like crazy time travel hijinks where it was like somehow <laughs> Miles was like a younger version of that guy? <laughs> um, I mean, because that's hilarious. <laughs> no. And they have. I've probably mentioned this before, but they have a uh, superhero movie and, and uh, like, like, I guess both movies, like, movie connections. Um, so, the the Dharma Initiative guy, um, Candle, that's not his real name, but that's, that's the, he goes, he goes by in the videos, Marvin Candle. He is, um, Shredder and Ninja Turtles 2. And then Miles is the, uh, spiky fish guy in X-Men 3. Uh, the guy who hugs that scientist lady and kills her by shooting the, his, his spikes out. <laughs> Really? Yeah, that's who that is. <laughs> With the stupid face tattoos? Yeah. Yep. That's who that is. <laughs> you need to see that movie again. No, you don't. It's terrible. Yes, I do. <laughs> because the only reason I like that is because of the thing that no one likes. With Juggernaut? Yeah. I don't know why, but you love the Juggernaut thing. Anyway, so I love the Juggernaut and everything. So, th- so those are your two favorite episodes. Uh, the, the constant thing is... Um, is kind of sappy, but I end up liking the chemistry with him and Penny so much, I guess I don't mind it. Uh, the whole idea that y- in order to anchor yourself into your time period, when you get like dislodged in time, you have to have like a, like, like a personal constant, like a, a thing or a person that uh, you're, you're like you're like so passionate about that you, that you, that you care so much about that it, that it anchors you. So it, it kind of plays like a love conquers all sort of message. Um, I really like uh, his determination and that whole thing uh, when he's in the past where Penny th- is is like totally done with him and and uh, like like he's kind of written him off and thinks that he's crazy because he's like uh, you know when I call you on this particular day, you know like seven years from now or whatever, like pick up the phone. And she's like, yeah, whatever. And, and then she ends up doing that. And she's been, you know, she has a change of heart. She's been looking for him the whole time. And that sets everything in motion that has her trying to find him and sets up the whole Penny's Boat thing in the first place. And so at the end of last season, you had not Penny's Boat. And then we bookend that. With, at the end of this <laughs> season, we Penny's have Penny's Boat. Boat. She actually shows up yeah. and uh, helps, to, helps to get them off the <laughs> island. And uh, I, I really wanted somebody else to, to, to like, be dying. And they're like drowning, and whoever it is, and they have like a piece of paper that they've written on. Yes, Penny's boat. <laughs> so, um, maybe in uh, our previously on Lost video, we could have the um, not Penny's boat thing, and then we could just cut to it's Penny's it's boat. Penny's boat. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, Jason and I are talking about doing a compilation video. Uh, like the the, the, the popular uh, previously on, on X-Men video, if you've ever seen that on YouTube. Look that up, because it was gone for a while, but it's back now, and it's one of our favorite favorite things on YouTube. Uh, it's hilarious. Just, just look up previously on X-Men. It's really funny. There's two parts. Uh, but we, we want to do the same thing with Lost. <laughs> previously on Lost. <laughs> one idea I had at one point, too, Jason, was, and I think I like our idea better, but um, at one point I was going to do one where it was uh, it was previously on Lost, but in the style of Last Time on Batman, where it's like, previously we have seen, and then there's like a voiceover guy, and it's like, uh, and it's like, it's like you know, uh, Charlie, uh, you know, you know, Charlie drowned, saying, uh, not Penny's boat. It's like, da 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 
and then like same lost time, same lost channel. <laughs> I just thought that'd be really funny. <laughs> Where like instead of a spinning bat symbol, it's like a spinning Dharma sign. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay, what else you got? Um, but I like that there are lots of new characters. Yeah. There's like five new characters. Uh, there's three major new characters, and none that are considered regulars until season five. So Juliet and Miles and Faraday will, I think, all three be series regulars by season five. At least two of them. Juliet are. was already a main or not, character. Not Juliet. I'm sorry. Um, what's her name? Uh, the 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 girl that's with um, that's that's with Faraday, that he that he's in love with. Um. I don't remember. Charlotte. Charlotte. Oh yeah, Charlotte. Yeah, she she's the she's the other new character, and I I think she might be the one that doesn't get the the, the every episode credit, um, but more or less all three of them will become series regulars. Uh, but what what do you mean by oh I guess there's Lapidas. Yeah, Lapidas. Yeah, okay. Well, who's the other one? Um, the killer guy on the boat. Oh, okay, Michael but he's just Strong kind of he's just kind of a bad guy, right? Yeah, like, he's a bad guy, but I feel like and he's, he's dead already. Dead. I mean, he's dead now. So. <laughs> yeah, I felt like he was a new character for that season. That's fair. Okay, good call. Like sure. he's kind of a main character in that season. And even though we've added some new characters, doesn't it still feel like a way thinned out cast compared to season three? Or, yeah. do, or do you not have that? I felt that way this season, especially at this watch, where it was like, oh, it's like, we've really thinned out the herd. Like, even though we've added all these new characters, it's still, or it still feels like a lot less people to keep track of. Yeah. Maybe just because some of them we're not doing a whole ton with, and maybe it's because not everybody's getting flashback episodes, because we've gotten away from that formula. Like, we're, we're still doing the, um, you know, we jump to a different time period and we show you things that are happening to somebody in that, so that formula is still there. But we're not doing mostly, with a couple of, of notable exceptions, we're not doing a lot of flashing back to uh, establish characters and tell you their backgrounds. Uh, we do do one episode where we do that with uh, early on with all the newcomers. So, like, Miles gets a flashback and, um, and uh, a couple other people get flashbacks. I don't remember if Charlotte does. Mm. Um, but, uh, anyway, so... Yeah, yeah. Sawyer, uh, does almost the same thing he does last season, where he's not that much in the first half. Yep. And then he shows up a bunch in the second half. Mm hmm And we still get his, his, like, every season we get his best line. What is it this time? Well, it's just every... Almost every season. Like, I think the first couple, they don't do it. But open the damn door. <laughs> <laughs> they do it every season. Oh, that's hilarious. And they've done it third season, fourth season, and fifth season now. Oh, right. Even yes. the first episode? He, he just says yes. that one? He says that in the that. first episode. Of the so you're just always waiting for that? <laughs> yeah. I'm always waiting for that line. <laughs> that's that's really just funny. Sawyer's line. <laughs> you really like that character. Uh, yeah, he actually is not on my favorite character list, though, on the season. Well, he doesn't get a ton to do. He's mostly yeah. just following Locke around and trying to decide what he's going to do. And then he gets the big moment where he jumps out of the helicopter to, to uh, help lighten the weight so, at the end of the season. So, uh, one of my bad things is yeah. he doesn't come home. He, he's not one of the six. And okay. he's you my will favorite character. Let me just say, you will change your mind about that choice. Okay. I think. Okay, because, like... Because the fact that he doesn't leave the island is why he's able to be where he is when, when we get to, in my mind, the best stuff we ever do with him in the entire series, and you haven't gotten there yet. Oh. But if he'd gotten off island, they couldn't have done it. So I think you're going to be really happy with it. Ultimately, okay. With ultimately, the fact that he wasn't one of the sex. And also, why is it really that big of a deal? Because we don't do a ton with the oceanic sex, right? Like, we kind of book in the season with it, and we lose them a lot in the middle. Like, we'll occasionally jump back over there just to establish 
uh, just to nudge you a minute and be like, uh, you didn't think this was gonna be worth a six, did you? <laughs> did you? It's obnoxious. It's like, it's, it's like, oh, and then that's one of the six. Okay, okay, great. Or, or to be like, uh, here's Saeed killing somebody else for Ben, you know? And then, but mostly, the Oceanic Six thing is just, um, is just like, uh, we have to go back! And then, like, a whole season of trying to get off the island and then occasionally checking back in with that and then, and then you get to the end. We have to go back! Like, that's, that's, that's pretty much what it is. Well, I feel, I felt like, I mean, they could do some cool stuff with that. Like, but isn't most of it in the first two episodes and the last three episodes? Like, what cool yeah. stuff do they do in the middle? I don't know. They just meet each other a lot of times, and it's kind of cool. I just feel like, I don't I know. Felt, I felt like they could have done some cool stuff with all the characters, like, if they put, like, Sawyer in or something, because they could have oh, okay. done something cool with, like, the triangle. The problem is, I feel like if Sawyer is there... He either is going to get killed or he's going to find a way to actually murder Ben. Like, I feel like he can't be off <laughs> island or the Ben thing is not going to actually work out. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just like that character. I don't, I don't know. Well, that's cool. But, but the point I'm making is you probably got to see him more because it was on the island than you would have if he gotten off. Because we don't go there that often. To the, fla we, to the flash forwards. We do. I, I just feel like there's just not that much going on at all. Like, like if <laughs> this was, I have to say, probably my worst viewing of season four. I always mistakenly remember this as being like my second favorite season, but it's actually really five because there were things that I thought happened this season that don't happen until five. And so, like, don't get me wrong, I like some of what we do with the flash forwards, but we just don't spend a whole lot of time there. And yeah. frankly, there's. There's not a ton you can do there anyway. Like, like, like the point of it really is just to say none of these people are any happier off the island than they were on the island, and that because they left, somehow the the people on the island are more in danger and they have to get put back together and go back. Like and, it's pretty plotty. And now Sawyer can't wear a shirt. No, no, we can't. <laughs> I was going to mention that. Yeah. I I like Kate's trial. I think that's a good episode. Um, I like all the stuff with with uh, with Hurley in the mental institution. Um, that's all yeah. really good and, and, and kind of sad. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never known how I feel about Saeed being uh, the, the like the assassin guy now. Assassins. <laughs> um, how, but, do you, how do you feel about that? Uh, one of my questions is uh, <laughs> what Saeed is working for Ben. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> if we want to, we can just go through my questions. Sure. I have like three. Um, doesn't it have something to do with Nadia? Yeah. Like he's doing that because he's supposed to get something out of it, and I can't remember why. It, 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 I'm just I'm just not remembering now. It I has something to do with Nadia. Nadia. I remember Nadia. <laughs> Being in there, but somewhere, but I don't remember. Yeah, he's he's desperate to find her and get her back, and that's why he's working for Ben. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and I may turn out to be wrong whole, about that. I'm I'm forgetting, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That whole payoff with like him working for Ben at the end of that episode, it's again just the whole audience thing. Because sure, he could mask himself on the call, but in person. You don't see him on camera, and he's still talking that way. And then when you turn to him, he's talking like he normally does. Really gimmicky character reveals. And, yeah. Yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, him and Hurley together is fun. Yeah. Uh, Saeed and Hurley? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing at the end is awesome. And, and you get some of that at the beginning of Five, uh, where, where, he, where he kills that guy with a dishwasher. That, because... You were starting to fall asleep again, and um, I was just like, wait, wait, the dishwasher opened up. Oh, no, that's going to happen, isn't it? And now, boom. I was and not, then I was not was falling like, asleep what? at that part. But um, full disclosure, Jason and I have been watching uh, the show early in the morning uh, after you know some late nights when I'm working on videos and stuff. And so uh, there are some episodes that I've nodded off on, so I, I, there, there are some things that I maybe missed this time around. So that's why I'm saying there are a few things where I'm going, I think it's like, I'm running off memory a little bit. Uh, I, I saw most of it, but there's, there's a few episodes I missed bits and pieces of. So, uh, Cause you I, fell asleep. So, yeah, so, so I apologize. So thanks for bringing that up. I really appreciate it. 
Um, and then yeah, the island can move. The island can move with a big crank thing that got frozen. And that they have a picture of in the first episode of fifth the, season. The five, yeah, mm-hmm. with with uh with the Dharma guy. Yeah, and um, like you said, like there was some big things with Faraday later, mm-hmm. and um, when I there were some really cool things where I was just like, oh, it's that guy. It was that guy because what guy? um just. There were a couple places where, like, um, I saw a coat, I saw Faraday's beard, and I was just like, Faraday. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I saw, um... Where are you getting to where you can tell who the reveals are? <laughs> and then I saw, um, that one guy's shirt. Um, You're talking about from Five? Yeah. Um, I, I saw that, uh, the guy from Tick, um... The guy from Tig. Yeah. Oh, 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 Richard. Uh, yeah, Richard. Yeah, Batman um, well. Mm-hmm. And... Nestor Carbonell. I, I saw his shirt, and I'm just like... That's Richard. That's Richard. <laughs> yeah, so Richard's everywhere. I don't think we've come right out and said yet that, like, like that he doesn't age, but it's really clearly that it's, it's, clearly it's that's clear what's going on. that, yeah. We'll come right out and have a conversation about it in five, but I, that was another thing that I thought happened in four. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, this, I don't know if it's actually true, but it, yeah. it's not, like, clear. Yeah. So, Ben controls the smoke monster? So, this is one of those places where I can't tell you anything. <laughs> like? That is, in the moment, certainly what it appears to be. Yeah. So, the smoke monster is coming after them, and it looks like they're all gonna die. Mm-hmm. And he has like this uh, secret back room, and he goes through a door and he leaves, and then the smoke monster is gone. And when he comes back out, I think Locke asks him about it, and he just doesn't say anything. Um, I can't tell you what's going on there. Okay. But, and some there's a couple things is, I want to say right now, and I, I don't want to give anything away. Something so is controlling the smoke monster. I think. I can't, I, yeah, I can't, I can't <laughs> tell you what's happening. Do you want to go ahead and do any predictions right now, or? Um, I don't have any. <laughs> yeah, this time you don't really have any? <laughs> nope. There are lots of questions. I can't make any predictions. That's what the season is like, yeah. Uh, so, well, do you have any predictions with what we might do with, with time travel stuff? Like on island? Uh... More time travel stuff. But I mean, like, specifically, like, like... Um, probably gonna go, like, probably, like, way back. Like, way before, like, they left, like, way before they crashed. Or we might even go, like, to the day of the crash and see the crash happen. That's probably what'll happen. You think? Uh, yeah. Uh, so are you still feeling pretty solid in some of the things that you were calling last time? Like, do you still think what you were thinking about the smoke monster? Uh, I don't know. Like, like your, your whole, your whole read before was the smoke monster is a shapeshifter. And that it's pretending to be a lot of people, including, uh, Jack's father. Mm Mm-hmm. Who, by the way, shows up again in the cabin with Claire. Claire is is missing most of the season, and something very strange is going on with her. Yeah. And uh, she now knows, uh, through, uh, through Christian, or whatever we're looking at there, that I uh, that she and Jack are uh, step brother and sister. But that's the last time we saw her. Yeah. Well, I think, no. or do we see her again? Well, um, no, we don't see her again, but we, well, well, we see her again in a flash forward. Oh, we do? But not actually. Where is she in a flash forward? Um, we see her in a Kate dream. 
Oh, okay, sure, but she's not off island. But she's not. Yeah, but yeah. that's but that's whatever. I'm just talking about the character, like like where yeah. we last last left that character. Oh, yeah, we don't. Is see is it is in that is in that cabin? Yeah. And we still don't know anything else about Jacob. Like the uh, no. the cabin seems to be moving around still. I have to be honest with you, unless I'm forgetting something, I don't think I don't know why that is. Like I have no idea why the cabin jumps around. Yeah. Maybe I'm forgetting something, but I'm pretty sure that's never resolved. I don't know, though. Uh, but, yeah, so that's, I don't know, that's a, that's a, that's a big question mark. Um, but, but I was just wondering if you still, still thought that about the smoke monster, because um, you had a whole thing last season um, where you thought that maybe Ben worked for the smoke monster. Really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, and now you're well... thinking that Ben controls the smoke monster. Yeah. Even though, once again, keep in mind that they had pylons to keep the smoke monster out. It's it it's it's weird because they think because they're they're trying to make us think that he does control the smoke monster. And but I don't know. And I don't even <laughs> like I, I just don't even know like sure. what's gonna happen now. Like I have. No ideas. What do you think uh, of Ben as a character right now? Like through this, with you know, just all the manipulation he's... and the lying and his ability to make people do anything he wants them to, even though they all know that he's that he's a liar and a scumbag. So, um, I don't have any least favorite characters, but he's one of my like middle characters. Oh, okay. Where um, he and Locke are both like kind of middle for me um where they're better or well Locke is better than he was last season ben is worse than he was last season you think how come um i don't know like he just he i feel like he does more like liar things yeah Um, well i think the deal is He's doing a whole lot of that all the way through, but you don't always know it. And so yeah. more of it is coming out now. But, I mean, that's that's how he operates. He's, he's rarely telling the truth. You remember Saeed has that line uh, in, in the first episode of Five where he says, uh, whatever, he, whatever he tells you, do the opposite. Um, but my biggest issue... Is and I don't get this at all. Okay. Is his line so? Yeah. When he kills that guy. Yeah. And then he's just like, you killed all the people on the boat. Yeah. And then he's just like, so? And I'm just like. You, don't you remember? This is the guy who murdered the Dharma Initiative. So, all of them. But. Just. He is all, he's all ends justifies the means and he's all about himself. Like, yeah, he doesn't care about the people on the boat. Remember, they're there to murder him. Well, they're there to capture him. I mean, like, like the, the, the whole reason they came to the island was because they were hired by Widmore to get him. Mm. They're his enemies, just like he felt like Dharma was. Well, more, more so, because, like, they're actually after him. So yes, Ben is the kind of guy who'd be like, yeah, everybody on that boat dies, I don't care. Because they're not after me anymore. Did you forget about that part? That, like, yeah. their motivation was to get him? Well, I I, I, for, I didn't forget about that part. Yeah. But I didn't... I don't know. This is not a moral guy. Yeah. You see, I mean, I, I mean Ben will do whatever he has to <laughs> to, to, to benefit himself. Then why and, doesn't and he just kill why, everyone because, himself? Um, because he, after, like, and not, and like, he makes everyone else kill people. Yeah, because he doesn't have the resources. So he convinces other people to do things that he can't do on his own because he doesn't have the resources. Hmm. Like, how would he do it? How would he, like, get on that boat and take those people out? No, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm okay. talking about, okay. like... I'm talking about why does he make Saeed do all the work? Because he's good at it? Because he's not an assassin? 
sure it looks and, like and it. Because he has other stuff to do. What, Ben? Yeah. Ben's a killer. He's not an assassin. He's not a trained assassin. You yeah. need a skill set. That's a skill set he doesn't have. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference between a killer and an assassin. You know what I mean? He has, he has say he can do it because he's good at it. And because he can get into places that would be harder for Ben to get to. And also because he knows where people are that Ben might not know. Maybe. Well, that's a question. You never totally know what Ben knows and what he doesn't. Uh, which both makes him really intriguing and mysterious, but also gets kind of convenient. My biggest issue with Ben is we do that kind of, um, like, Spawn Maman thing where we'll retroactively say that all these things that we arbitrarily decided to happen in the plot was Ben's idea all along. Uh, if you if you start to unravel and break some of that stuff down, it doesn't all always really work. Uh, I I don't think um, we won't talk all that out. But I think there I think there are some things where you know in the moment he's oh that was my idea and I'm like mm, really like it seems like that was more the scriptwriter's idea and then they attribute it to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So. My Personally, by the way, I love that moment when it was like they're all they're all dead. So I mean I love you know, I love that, and I also think we should put that in previously in Lost. Anyway. <laughs> um. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. You know what it should be? It should be when we're, when we're, when we're trying to, um, when, when, we're, when we're editing those things together, mm -hmm. uh, it should be, you've got some arsed on you. So? so? <laughs> anyway. What else you got? They're all dead. So? So? I was wrong. I was wrong! <laughs> we have to go back, so? <laughs> we have to go back. I was wrong. <laughs> or we could have a lot of fun with, uh, with Don't Say His Name. Also, where it's like, where it's like, oh, the smoke monster. Don't say his name. Jacob, don't say his name. <laughs> There's some other characters we should probably talk about. Uh, what do you think about the uh, kind of redemption for Michael and the whole he can't he yes. can't die on the uh, I guess not even just off the island. He, he's he, he's not able to die and all of that. Yeah. And like he pops the bomb and then it says not yet. <laughs> Yeah, that whole thing got absurd. And he's just like... <laughs> um, did you find yourself, like... Because obviously they, they want you to like him more at the end because he's kind of redeemed himself because he has the, kind of the big the big sacrifice thing. Like, did you think that worked or did you think it was kind of the obvious way to go? I've always felt like it was a little bit obvious, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean... I it's cool that he comes back and... See, I had written that character off at that point. It, when, when he comes, when, when I was watching this in real time, when it was on, and he came back, I was like, okay, I don't really care anymore. Like, I'm kind of done with Michael. And I was really done with Walt, because they, they clearly had kind of abandoned that whole thing and written it off. Like, I never expected, after a certain point, to ever find out about why Walt was supposed to be special or any of that. And, uh, see, so yeah, I just, I kind of written that off at that Walt, point. The whole thing with Walt is, like, he's a kid, so you can see that he grows up fast, and can't really do the whole thing where it's like 80 days and four years. That's why they wrote him out. But still, there's some stuff where like, sure, he meets Hurley again. But and, that's three years later. Right, that's three years later. Yeah. And they do um, a bunch of other things too. Um, when he meets uh, Locke, mm -hmm. when, he, when Locke gets shot, he looks way older, and he has like a different voice. Yeah, that's and true. The whole thing when he's looking at the window—that's like. But I don't know if that's actually him, though. And even if it's not, it's still sort of weird that if it's, if 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 it's like I uh, what because I'm I'm trying to have this conversation with you without telling you anything, uh, but like. If it's the same thing as is what's happening with all the other dead people on the island where they can just show up to you, why is it pretending to be older? 
Like, no, that's... I mean, you're right. That would be yeah. weird regardless. But I'm not a hundred... I don't think we... I don't think I ever knew this. I'm not a hundred percent sure that that's actually a wall. Yeah. And when he's looking out the window... Like, he's... Out the window. Um, in, in the Where? Michael episode? Mm-hmm. Um, that's like... In the 80-day thing. Well, that's true. So... Yeah. So I mean, I, 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 guess, I guess he I guess he gets off the island and more or less gets to live a life. So I mean, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's kind of cool because like they couldn't bring Michael back in like two years because he got arrested for drinking, and he, and he got. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. And um, and so it was kind of cool that they got him back for like. Two years after, because they could bring him back. But. And then, can we talk about how super cool Lapidus is? Because Lapidus is awesome. Yeah. I love that guy. Um. I think so, he's the best new character. Yeah. I, lo- I love Frank Lapidus. I I think Faraday is better. Oh, you like Faraday? Yeah. That's cool. Um, he's one of my favorite characters. I love how frustrated he gets where he, in, in, in that uh, finale where he has to just constantly fly a helicopter that's almost out of gas, and then they land it, and then they put some gas in it, and then he's back in the same position again where he's just flying it around and it doesn't have any gas. And he's like, where the heck's the island? <laughs> that's the best! It's like, where's the island? <laughs> that's not a thing you hear every day. We've lost <laughs> the island. <laughs> And then there's, like, I like that they bring up the other island. Where it was like, well, it was really close to this other one. So let's go find that. Well, there's water in every direction. I, I, I love it. Um, every single time they say either damn or hell. It's the <laughs> funniest thing ever. <laughs> Is that just because you're 10 and you think those words are funny? <laughs> no, it's just, like... Just how they say it. Mm-hmm. It's like, open the damn door. Where the hell's the island? Kate, damn it, Ron! <laughs> Are you just using this as an opportunity to get to say those words because you're 10? No. Okay. I don't really want to say those. I, I, I guess he's just quoting. Let's not keep swearing constantly, Jason. <laughs> uh, what, what else? What else is uh, on your list that you want to talk about? Um, I like Desmond. I know Desmond's Desmond's, Desmond's awesome. You're not gonna get a lot more Desmond now that he's found Penny. Yeah. Yes, Penny's boat. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I think. Is it? So you don't have any like least favorite episodes or? Mm-mm. I couldn't come up with any. Just everything was, well, was what's, all right. What's your least favorite episode? Just the, that, those particular scenes of, <laughs> of Gion. I, 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 re, I really hate that. No, beyond that, I don't know. Um, it's a pretty tight season overall. Uh, well, I say tight. I don't know. Like, I think it's a pretty consistent season, quality-wise. Uh, my main complaint is just that I feel like we're in a holding pattern on, on, on the island for a good long time. Yeah. Uh, where it's like, we, we've, we've established this uh, thing that has to happen at the end of the season where where a certain number of characters get off the island. And then we have to keep making it difficult for that to happen. So then that becomes the new formula, where it's like, oh, we're about to get the off the island, oh, no, we're not. Oh, we're about to get off the island, oh, no, we're not. And so we just kind of get in a, in a, in a holding pattern um, up until that point, which I guess is why I'm liking the mystery stuff better than that stuff, even if it also is... I uh, kind of just sitting there and not telling you too much yet, uh, just because it, I don't know that stuff seems a little bit more engaging uh, because it'll give you a little bit extra or you know a, a little bit more here and there. And then with with the freighter stuff, it's just when are we gonna get off? Are you people here to kill us? I just got a little bit tired of that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think I had a least favorite episode. Well, thanks, everybody, for, for uh, watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will see you again in the not too distant future for Season 5, which I'm uh, surprisingly a lot more excited to talk about. Uh, so I can't wait for us to finish that and, and, and do another video. And we'll have lots more fathers and sons for you every week, uh, somewhere in the middle of the week. We've, we're, uh, we're doing these. So we've got quite a few in the can right now.
So. When are we going to leave? We have to go back! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see you again next time. I was Captain Logan. And I was Jason. And we were father. And son. Later, folks. Yeah! <laughs>